One other very powerful thing we can do with the SQL Server agent is we can create alerts. Now, a job is something that executes at a particular time or even not even at a particular time as a one-off. So I can set up a job that is not scheduled that I can execute manually. But one of the other things we can do with the SQL Server agent is we can create alerts to help with the monitoring of our system. Let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to expand this, and I don't need jobs here. Let's create a new alert. So I'm going to right click and say new alert. I'm going to set my alert name and this is going to be, I'm going to monitor my memory usage. So I'm going to create a memory usage alert. And I can choose to enable this or not enable this. And then I can set my type of alert. So I can look for a specific SQL event for an SQL services performance conditions or a WMI event alert. So Let's start with the SQL event alert. And I can set my database for that. And then I can look for a specific error number. So let's say I'm having a recurring error and I'm trying to track it down. So I want this alert to run anytime this uh, error is generated. Or I can look for a specific type of severity. So I can look for any particular type of severity here. Let's say I'm looking for something that's insufficient resources, and that will let me set an alert based on that. Now, in this case, I want to do it based on an SQL performance condition. So I select the SQL perf performance condition. I look at my objects, and this is going to come from performance monitor, uh, the performance monitor tools. So I can choose any of these performance conditions. And you'll see there's a bunch of stuff here. So let me find, let's go for memory manager. And then I get to choose the, uh, once I've set the object, then I can set the counter. So free memory, granted workspace, lock blocks, and you can see all of the different options uh, we're looking at here. So let's set, let's set free memory. And then we can set the instance. And in this case, we don't really have an instance of free memory. If it was processors, that might be an issue. But let's say I want to set an alert if this falls below free memory and kilobytes, let's say 1 meg. So if our free memory falls below 1 megabyte, this will generate an alert. And then, based on that, what do we want to do? So we can set a response. We can execute a job, or we can notify the operators. Now, this becomes really convenient. If there's something that we know is typically an issue, then we can write a job or a PowerShell script uh, executed as a job. We do an execute job, and then we can click the job or select the job that we want. So let me run this job here. It won't actually do anything, but let's pretend like it did. So I can set it to execute that job. So let's say I would have it stop and restart a service to clear memory or something like that. All right, the other option is to notify an operator. So I can choose to notify this operator via email. And that's another way we could approach it. And then last but not least is our options. Include the error alert. Let's include the error, error alert text and email, even though we're not actually using an error alert. And hit OK. And that creates a alert for us. And now this alert we can choose to enable or disable because we had alert or because we had it selected to enable when we created it, it's automatically enabled. If I want to turn it off for a while, I can disable it. Or I can just let it run. Now with that alert being active, any time that, that alert condition is triggered, and remember that can be an SQL event, it can be a performance counter issue, it can be whatever. Anytime that alert is uh, triggered, it will take whatever action that I set there. Execute a job or uh, notify the administrator. So that way, the SQL server agent is constantly monitoring the server for us and will get those alert notifications or automatically executed jobs, instead of us having to sit here and monitor it and potentially having a condition happen when we're not able to be monitoring it 24-7. So that's the purpose of alerts, a very, very powerful tool to use for 
or to use uh, with SQL Server. 